the world's most expensive runway leads nowhere. Well, technically, it leads to St. Helena, a volcanic speck in the South Atlantic, where Napoleon spent his final years and 4,500 people call home today. Picture this, you're building a bridge to connect an island that's been isolated for five centuries. The nearest airport is in South Africa, 1,200 miles away. The only other option is a passenger ship that arrives maybe 10 times a year, weather permitting. So you spend eight years and $375 million creating what should be a lifeline, a gleaming airport runway carved into ancient volcanic rock. Then you discover that geography has other plans. St. Helena sits alone in the South Atlantic, roughly halfway between Africa and South America. It's about the size of San Francisco, but with the population of a small town. For most of its history, this remoteness was the point. The British used it as a prison island. Napoleon wasn't the only exile. Thousands of enslaved people were brought here after being freed from illegal slave ships, creating a unique community that blended African, European, and Asian heritage. But isolation that once served empires became a burden for ordinary residents. By the 2000s, young people were leaving faster than supply ships could arrive. The island's economy depended almost entirely on subsidies from London, delivered by a single vessel called the RMS St. Helena. Here's where the story gets interesting. In 2005, Britain announced plans for St. Helena Airport. The logic seemed flawless. Regular flights would bring tourists, medical evacuations, and economic opportunities. The runway would be nearly 2,000 meters long, enough for Boeing 737s to land safely. Local contractors worked alongside international engineers to blast through volcanic terrain and create what looked like a perfect solution. Construction finished in 2016. The first commercial test flights were scheduled. And then pilots discovered something that wind studies had somehow missed. St. Helena's mountains create what meteorologists call wind shear sudden, violent changes in wind direction that can flip an aircraft in seconds. The topography that makes the island beautiful, dramatic cliffs, jagged peaks, turns approaching planes into leaves in a hurricane. On paper, the runway was perfect. In reality, it was a death trap for anything larger than a small turboprop. The airport that was supposed to end St. Helena's isolation had made it worse. The passenger ship service was canceled, assuming flights would replace it. Suddenly, 4,500 people found themselves more cut off than before, with a $375 million monument to miscalculation sitting on their doorstep. Today, St. Helena receives maybe one flight per week, sometimes fewer. Small aircraft can handle the winds better than jets, but they carry only 18 passengers and cost significantly more per seat. What was designed as a gateway became something closer to an expensive emergency exit. This isn't just an engineering failure. It's a preview of a larger problem. Climate change is making Atlantic storms more unpredictable, threatening the island's already fragile supply chains. Rising sea levels could eventually swamp the wharf where supply ships dock. Meanwhile, the airport that was meant to provide economic independence requires millions in ongoing subsidies just to maintain. The residents of St. Helena find themselves caught between two impossible choices, accept permanent isolation or depend on technologies that geography seems determined to defeat. Their airport works technically, just not reliably, not affordably, and not for the future they were promised. It's a quiet reminder that in our hyper-connected world, true remoteness still exists. 
Sometimes the most sophisticated engineering can't overcome the simple fact that some places remain stubbornly difficult to reach. St. Helena's empty runway tells us that geography still wins, even when we throw hundreds of millions of dollars against it. Perhaps the real question isn't whether we can connect every corner of the world, but whether some places are meant to remain just slightly out of reach. Follow quiet maps to discover more stories hidden in the spaces between nations. Like and subscribe for the geography that shapes our world.